One of the reasons why going to church is such a joyous experience is because of the element of praise. The Bible says, I was glad when somebody said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And in the house of the Lord, this is a place of praise, but you don't got to be in the house of the Lord in order for you to praise God. You can praise God even if you are away from the house of the Lord. The scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and the Lord will give you the desires of your heart. One of the most powerful Christian experiences is praise. When we can just let out our praise to God. Often we want to think that we praise God because of what he has done for us. Now I know that we do have a great track record of the marvelous works of God in times past. When we see how far God has brought us a mighty long way and how much he has blessed us along the way, we want to praise him. He's a great God. He is worthy of praise, but his worthiness is not because of what he has done. His worthiness is because of who he is. When we praise God, we are extolling him. We are enthroning him. We are putting him in his rightful place. We praise him for who he is. And then in addition, for what he has done. But we praise him primarily because he is worthy all by himself of all our praise. Praise is what wells up from our hearts. Praise must emanate from our hearts. When we praise God, we should not depend on the one who does the call to worship and calls us to worship. Praise must be spontaneous. Praise must emanate from our hearts. When we praise God, there's so much that we got to be grateful to God for. But we don't praise God for what he has done, but we praise God for who he is. There's a difference. There's a difference. We can give gratitude when we look at what God has done in times past. But he does whatever he did in times past because of who he is. We must give God the praise because of who he is. When we praise God, we are practically extolling him. We are placing him on his throne where he belongs. When we extol God, we are saying there is nobody higher than our God. And he is worthy of our praise. We praise him for who he is. The Bible says that he inhabits our praise. In other words, when we extol him, we enthrone him. We put him on his high pedestal, on his high throne where he belongs. So praise is when we lift him up and we place him on his throne. Let me tell you, when God is sitting on his throne, above him there is no other. So praise is extolling God and giving him all the glory and all the exaltation and all the honor that is due to his name. But our praise can be retrospective praise where we are looking back to the acts of God in history and we are saying what God has done in times past is praiseworthy. And when you look at your own history and you see how far God has brought you, you praise him. You praise him because of what he did in times past. That's retrospective praise. But you've got to have introspective praise. When you look inside of yourself, when you look around you, and you see what it is that God is doing in this very point in time, you give him praise. That is praise. That is introspective praise that wells up from the depth of our hearts. And, and we are thanking him for who he is. But we go past the praise that is introspective perspective we can even go into praise that is prospective where we are looking far ahead and and we are expecting God to do some things and some acts of history into the future so we praise him in advance we praise him prospectively so I pray that your praise is not just prospective not just 
introspective, not just retrospective, but you are praising God for who he really is. He is God and he changes not. So let's give him all the praise and all the glory and magnify his name and extol his name and enthrone him because you know what? He inhabits our praise. He literally sits on the glory and on the praise that is due his name. And he is worthy of every little bit of praise that wells up from a sincere heart.